The Fools of Kelm. The town of Kelm in Eastern Europe is a very special place. And Kelm is special because its people are special. They are like no others, for you see, each and every Kelmite is a sage. They are all as wise as owls. At least that's what they believe. The rest of the world considers them fools and simpletons. But this does not bother the Kelmites in the least. They know they are the wisest people on earth, and in the end, is it the way we see ourselves all that really matters? Now, the sages of Kelm enjoy nothing more than to match their wits against a good puzzle or problem. They thrive on the challenge of solving the most complex and knotty conundrums. It has been that way from the beginning, ever since they built their shul, or synagogue. The synagogue, of course, serves not only as the house of prayer and the house of study, but also as a town meeting place. So naturally, it was the first structure to be built in town. The people of town were digging the shul foundation when a disturbing thought occurred to them. Wait a minute. Hold everything. What are we going to do with all the dirt we're digging up? We can't leave it here where we're going to have our shul. We never thought of that. What indeed are we to do with all this dirt? Many suggestions were made, but all were quickly rejected as unworkable. Wait, I have it. All we have to do is dig a deep pit, and that's where we'll shovel the dirt we're digging up for the foundation. Hooray! A genius! The men began to dig another pit. Hold it, hold it, hold it. This doesn't solve anything. What are we going to do with the dirt from this hole? Well, it's really very simple, isn't it? We'll just dig one more pit. We'll make it twice as large as this one, and that's where we'll shovel all of the dirt from this hole and all the dirt from the foundation. Don't you agree, Ozada Scala? Hmm, yes, yes. According to my calculations on this abacus, we will need to dig a very, very, very deep hole. There was no arguing with this early example of Kelmic logic, and the men returned to their work. No one today can be certain how many pits were dug during the building of the shul, but it is certain the shul was built. For the second public building in Kelm was the mikvah, the ritual bathhouse. The Kilmites decided that the mikvah should come next so that prior to each Sabbath holiday or special occasion, everyone would be able to bathe correctly. So the sages climbed the mountain and felled some of the larger trees and rolled them down the hill. But when the trees were at the bottom, Dovid the barrel maker pointed out yet another problem. Before we carry these logs into town, we must decide which end should be carried in first. What do you mean, which end? What difference does it make? What difference? It makes all the difference in the world. Correct me if I am mistaken, but I believe each of these logs has two ends. Who can argue? Everyone can see that each log indeed has two ends. So what? So, it is well known that the one who goes first is the one most honored. And since we have already honored these logs by choosing them above all others to use in our mikvah, we must now decide which end should be further honored by being carried into town first. Oh, that's true. It's a good thing we thought of it. Now a discussion began about which end should be so honored. Those who were right-handed naturally thought it should be the right end. And just as naturally, those who were left-handed thought it should be the left end. The debate continued through the afternoon, 
At last, hoping the matter might be resolved by a wisdom more penetrating than their own, they presented their problem to Ozar the scholar. If only all problems were as simple as this, how pleasant life would be. All you need to do is cut off the left end of the log. Then you will have only one end, the right end. And that being the only end left, it will be the right end to carry into town first. Brilliant. Remarkable. You can always count on a scholar. So David brought out a saw and cut through the wood. A thin round fell to the ground. Hooray! Hooray what? The log still has two ends. How can that be? Perhaps you haven't cut off enough. So David began again. His saw slid back and forth until another round fell from the log. Hooray! Enough hoorays already. There are still two ends. It is written that, where we truly wish to go, there our feet will carry us. David was not to be put off so easily. With fierce determination, he cut round after round until he was too wary to even lift his saw. Someone else took over, also cutting round after round. But no matter how many ends were cut off, two ends still remained even though they were at last separated by less than a foot of wood. Foot-long logs would never do for a bathhouse, so off they went again for Ozar, the scholar. And when Ozar saw for himself the tiny stub of a log, he announced, There is no need to cut any more. All you have to do is carry these logs sideways into town. That way, both ends will be first, and both will be honored equally. What a brain. What wisdom. Now that's using the old noodle. Let's start with this long one. But wait. What now? Look at the road. It's lined with houses. These logs are too long to go in sideways. So what's the problem? We'll simply tear down the houses. And so they did. Of course, the houses would have to be rebuilt. But that would come later. After all, even angels can't sing two songs at once. The end. <laughs>